Okay, esteemed panelists, would you please introduce yourselves to us? Hi, my name is Abi. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a master's student at the University of Michigan. Uh, I'm pursuing my master's in health informatics, which is uh, which is a master's degree from School of Information and the School of Public Health. I take some of my classes with the medical school too. Um, coming here has been a great experience for me in terms of an international student and as a master's student as well. Um, you'll have, I'm sure you're gonna have a great time here uh, in terms of opportunities, as I saw that most of your polls had re results based on research and having a work-life balance. The school has immense number of opportunities when it comes to research and on-campus jobs. So uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on that. Also, um, as, as an international student or as someone who, who is a master's student, there are ample of resources here and opportunities for here for all of you guys um, to welcome you all here. And yes, congratulations on being accepted at the school. Hi everyone, my name is Malia. I use she, her pronouns. I am an upcoming second year student at the School of Social Work receiving my master's in the interpersonal pathway, um, along with being in the Integrative Health for Medically Underserved Populations Scholars Program. Um, I'm excited to speak with you all today and congratulations on getting accepted. Hi everyone, my name is Daksh. I use pronouns as he, him. I'm a second year master's student in electrical and computer engineering, which comes under Rackham Graduate School. And yeah, it's nice to speak with all of you and congratulations on your admit. Okay, thank you, panelists. So what I'd like to ask you first is what do you wish you knew in your first year here in Michigan? So Coming here as a master's student, it's really important for us or for you guys or for us who's coming just as an incoming student to have all of the opportunities that are there on campuses. You would be having, like once you get accepted, you have a resource book from the school that would give you as a guiding document of all the resources available, whether you're a master's student or in, as an international student. And I wish that I, I utilized most of these resources that are there on campus. Um, as a master's student or as a grad student, it's really important. I know like the school and the academics is e equally important for all of us, but then building your connections, getting engaged with all of these kind of um, opportunities that are there on campus, uh, building connections is equally as important. Um, I know how, how difficult it can be to come here and of getting your life settled in a different city altogether, like Ann Arbor. But um, there's so many options here, um, like so many communities here that are that welcome you all. So it's really important that I knew that everything you need as an incoming master student exists on campus and you utilize all of those um, to build your network, your connections, and to feel that you're not alone in this journey. It's everyone on campus that is here to support you guys on this journey. Um, for me, I think that I would just tell everybody, it's very generic, I know, but that everything works out and everybody is in the same boat um, and experiencing the same highs and lows of their program. And I know, again, it sounds very generic, but it's one of those things that people tell you time and time again, and you just brush off. Um, for me, during like my first semester, um, I moved here for the first time. I had no community. I knew absolutely nobody. And then bringing on the identity of a graduate student brings its own stressors and hardships. Um, and within the first semester, I was getting a little bit stressed because, you know, deadlines were coming. Um, my field placement started and I kind of lost that drive and excitement of being a grad student. Um, so I would definitely say like, reach out to people, um, have those conversations with others, because one, you're building a connection with fellow students, um, but you're also realizing that everybody has, is going through the same journey. So they're going to be experiencing the same things. Some people are just better at hiding it, um, but you're never alone. And there's also faculty that are speaking 
they're being paid to be there for you. Um, something that I saw in the poll was that a lot of people are nervous about classes and faculty, um, but they're being paid to be there for you. So take advantage of them, ask them questions, even if it's the littlest questions and you feel like you're being annoying, you're not. Um, make the most of your time being here. Um, the faculty are very understanding. You just have to be willing to talk to them. Um, but the main thing is that everything will work out how the universe intends it to be. You just have to trust and buckle down for the ride. Yeah, so uh, for me, the most important thing that I would say is like manage your time effectively. The thing is like take accountability of your time because graduate studies are like quite demanding. It requires a lot of time, a lot of efforts. It's gonna put a mental stress on you. So I would highly recommend like use a planner or like calendar, something like that. So that you can schedule all of your stuff. You can like be prepared for everything and just like be on time because here time is a very big thing and it will always be like catching you up. So don't like miss on some things. So this is one of the things that's quite important. Also a thing is like be, be proactive in your career planning like don't wait for any of the events to come up to you just try and grab all the opportunities that you find yourself and like look for opportunities and like don't stop searching for your career opportunities anytime like you land here and all of the things start and like your career fair is gonna be in just a few couple of weeks from coming here so like be active and like look for all the things that are around you and like just apply for stuff so yeah. Okay, thanks y'all. Now that we have learned a little bit about what you wish you knew in your first year, can you share with us what you wish you had done in your first year? Sorry, Sam, can I have you repeat on the question? Yeah, what do you wish you had done in your first year? Okay. So coming here, um, like I was, I was ending up on a research in Berkeley while I got accepted to Michigan and it was really hard time for me. Uh, so coming here, I had already lost one week of school. Uh, I was already falling late to my, all of the schedules. So when I got here, um, it was already late for me to start my school and the deadlines were already there, but as an incoming master's student um, in a different environment, I did not know, or I, I was kind of afraid to go and approach my professors uh, about extending my deadlines on my assignments. So I wish I knew that it was really easy to, like getting ahead on my first year as a master's student, it was, it was really easy and then professors were really helpful. But then I wish I, I approached them in my, like when I had started my journey as a Michigan student so that I could have all of my challenges cleared up that would have been easy for me going forward but that's something that I would suggest to you guys that everyone here is pretty approachable from your professors to uh, your researchers or your um, colleagues or your or the students in your cohort everyone is pretty much available for you so don't be afraid of anything um, with, with regards to the mental health support that all of us need while we embark on this journey, there's this support network um, on Michigan that's called the Wolverine Support Network, which is for all of the students there. It's called the WSN. Um, so when I was going through all of my challenges in the first semester, I wish that I knew that it would, there was something kind of like this who would, that, that would help me through, um, through throughout my journey. But going forward, I, I realized that these are all networks or these are all like clubs or student associations that help you get through this journey. So it's very important that you guys know about all of these things when you start out as a student. Um, the main thing that I wish I would have done in my first year was kind of um, attending more workshops and events that are held by the university um, and even specifically like your field of study. So for me, um, anyone else who is going into social work, the School of Social Work holds 
multiple, multiple workshops a day throughout the semester, um, both in person and via Zoom. Um, so it makes it a little bit more accessible. Um, I've learned a lot of people at this level of education don't really enjoy being on campus more than they have to. Um, but for me, I really enjoy it. I think it's beautiful. It has a lot to offer. Um, and a lot of these events are being paid with tuition. So you might as well go if you have the time and make the most out of your time being here while you can, because it does go by very quickly, like within a blink of an eye. Um, and people say that all the time until you realize that you're halfway through your semester or halfway through your program and you, like you can't believe it. Um, but yeah, so like these workshops, it really allowed me to explore new areas of interest within my field of work. Um, it allowed me to build upon some knowledge that I already had. Um, allows for opportunities for making new um, connections, whether that be with faculty, with people who are coming to the university just to speak, or with people that are in your cohort that you didn't even know went to your, you know, field of study. Um, so while it can be a little bit annoying to make the time when you just want to chill at home, um, when you have the free time, I feel as though these workshops and events um, are really, really helpful. And two, something that may be a little bit incentive for some people is some of these workshops will also count as field hours, depending on your field of study and if your supervisor okays it. Um, so that is also an incentive to kind of get out and explore the university as a whole, but the events and workshops that are being put on for you. So, yeah, so like first thing I completely echo with the fellow panelists, it's really important to like connect with professors, connect with your peers, because building relationships and networking is one of the like biggest things in here. Like it helps you a lot if you are like building valuable relationship with your classmates, with your peers, it will be very helpful to you academically as well as socially, like while if you are like working on something work study groups are really helpful they help you a lot you will be able to get uh, a lot of study help during your exams it will be very helpful with you also like just connect with the professors because sometimes professors do help out students as well if you are in need of anything you can obviously talk to them and they are always happy to like respond to you they are always like happy to help you so don't be shy enough so that and don't think like what will happen if i'll just mail a professor just try it out so that's one of the things that i would say also the other thing is like there are hundreds of events that are happening every day around the campus so like don't just go out explore umich is a very big school there are a lot of events some of them will build your personality. Some of them will help you groom out yourself. So like, it's nothing like you just stay at your home or just focus on your academics. Academics is really important, but like go out for these events as well. They will teach you a lot. They will help you connect with new people. They will help you learn new things, which you would have not imagined itself. So it's a very good opportunity. So like just utilize all the resources that campus offers to you because there are many resources. And I would say is like, just search on Google, just search anything on Google and you'll find something related to it at Yomish. So like you can do anything you want and you can like always forward your curiosity in any of the directions, Yomish will be able to cater you at any point of time. So that's one thing. Also one thing that I wish I knew in my first year was like, how to manage my stress and self care so like don't get don't get deep dive into all of the academics and everything just take care of yourself at the end you have to you are the only one who's going to take care of yourself so keep uh, manage your stress take self care because obviously graduate studies are very 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 demanding so it might like make you feel low sometimes just but just be with yourself and like take care of or take care take a look at all the resources that campus provides so yeah that's it 
Thanks, y'all. I appreciate that. So now that we've discussed what you wish you had done in your first year, can you share with us what are the best things that helped you when you first got here? So building on two things that are important here. Your one is your career and one is the student life here. Pretty much um, all of the people I see on here, I think you would have accepted and made your mind coming to Michigan. So I would suggest you go ahead and get your season tickets for the Michigan game because those are the events. Those are the, those are, that is the event when you would have the opportunity to meet and build your network, make most of your friends that are gonna be with you for two of all of your years here the tailgates that happen before the game on every weekend, that's where you're going to have a huge amount of people coming in for the games, make many friends, many, many friends. And uh, eventually you'll find a group of your own friends who you can hang out at, hang out with. Uh, I don't know if the sale is, is still on for the season tickets, but it's like 200 bucks for students. But I would heavily encourage all of you guys to go to the games and start making friends as soon as you get on campus because i guess the first game that begins is um september I guess first week of september yeah so um that is the first thing that i want to have go have fun just step out of your comfort zone if you are a person who just likes to stay at home um, i would ad advise you ann arbor is not for you because the moment you you stay in home you start feeling lonely um stressed and everything the moment you step out, everything just like evaporates off your mind. So go ahead and enjoy the games for the game season in the fall. The second thing I would like to focus is the, that helped me when I first got here is the career fair. So most of you who, would, who are on this call right now would have pretty much their summer internships for summer 2024. And I got a summer intern offer through one of these career fairs. So SP, the School of Public Health and the School of Information has their career fairs in pretty much the first two weeks of starting. So get all of your resumes ready when you start the school off and be ready to network and connect with all of the people in the career fair because most of you will be landing your internship offers through the career fairs um, and being in connected with all of the um, um, leads and the hiring managers that come into the career fair. So those two things are the two key um, takeaways that I would like to highlight here. Go to the games, make friends, and then make sure you have your resumes ready before you start school um, in, this, in August. Yeah, so mine kind of goes a little teeny bit along with that. Um, the best thing that I did during my first year was making myself comfortable with the uncomfortable. I am trying, I'm an anxious person naturally, so I'm trying to kind of step out of that. Um, moving to a new area, specifically Ann Arbor for the first time and not knowing absolutely anybody, it was beyond stressful, especially when I was trying to think of how am I going to build connections at such a large university, like I know nobody. Um, and I was getting in my head about, well, I'm just going to go to class, I'm going to go straight home. Or I moved in a couple of weeks before classes started. And I just wanted to stay at home, because I was so anxious. And I just wanted to use the excuse of, oh, I'm just unpacking, you know. Um, but forcing myself to get out of the house before my courses started, and during the first couple of weeks really allowed me to get a little bit more comfortable because Ann Arbor is small, but it is so packed full of different people um, and different communities. It allowed me to kind of ease my mind because now I knew, okay, I know the general area of where I'm living. Um, and that helped me like just calm down a little bit before classes started. Um, Ann Arbor is great in the sense where Everybody is doing their own thing. So if you're going to coffee shops, if you're going to the farmer's market, if you're going to the R, places like those by yourself, nobody cares. Trust me, nobody is looking at you. Nobody's judging you. So don't get in your head about that. That was something that I kept having to remind myself of. Um, because doing this kind of stuff is a really good conversation starter as well, especially during orientation. Um, when you're meeting all the new people that are, you're going to be surrounded with for your entire program, it's nice to kind of start off with, 
you know, like, hi, my name is Malia. And then kind of start talking about, well, have you been to this coffee shop? Have you been here? Um, and then if they haven't, you know, you can start a little study group with them there or go to a coffee shop before or after class um, to further build some friendships and get your core group um, while you go throughout your program. Something else that I did was during orientation, um, I got up from my seat by myself and I sat next to somebody at an empty seat at a big table. Um, little things like that really help you along the way because I still talk to that girl that I met during orientation and I wouldn't have had that connection if I didn't step out of my comfort zone. Um, something that I would also say is making time for yourself, especially for your mental health and setting boundaries. Um, especially with schoolwork. Um, you know, if you have a million things to do on your to-do list, just pick a couple. And once you complete those, let yourself rest for the night because in the end, you deserve it. Like um, one of our other panelists said earlier, nobody's going to tell you to take those breaks. You have to do it yourself and remember that you're worthy of breaks. Um, yeah, that's what. So the best thing that helped me in my first year was definitely the orientation week. I would highly suggest you guys to like make the most out of the orientation week because there's a lot going on. There will be a lot of things, a lot of booths, a lot of events happening in the orientation week. So the thing is like, as Umish is such a big school, there's a lot of stuff going on. And many times what happens is we don't even get to know, like, these are the opportunities that are available. But through orientation week, like, you get to know a lot of stuff out of it. So I would highly suggest, like, just go around the orientation week and just go to the events that are, like, uh, that are the events that are made for you. So, like, you will be able to get to know the clubs, that are available on campus, the organizations, so that you can like join them. And many other times what happens is you get to connect with very good people that will be able to mentor you, will be able to like help you academically and will always be there for you because sometimes you find really great people in these kind of events. And before starting off school, the orientation week is the best time when you can enjoy <laughs> because once uh, class starts then it's hard that you get time for yourself and to enjoy so that's one of the biggest things uh, also one thing i would say is like build a support network for yourself so like try to make friends who are like really close to you and always like some people who are there for you for some time because you might need them and they, they will be the one that will always help you when you are really low. So that's one of the thing. Also make the most out of the research opportunities or internship opportunities that you get during the school year so that these will be able to add up to your resume, build up your profile, and these can help you like get summer internships as well. So if you are getting an opportunity then do get it do grab it make the most out of it work hard for it so that you can really like you can really use that in for your future aspects so this is these are the things that like helped me when i was in my first year and i hope like these help, will be helpful to you as well Thank you, panelists. Um, thank you again. Okay, y'all. So as we transition into the Q&A portion of our session, um, my colleague is going to place our evaluation survey in the chat. Can you please do me a favor and just open the link now um, and so that you'll have a tab ready and waiting for you when we're done? I believe it will be placed. And if not, I'll do it myself. Okay. Thank you, Kylie. Okay, so remember that we'll move through this Q&A by keeping stack. And for those of you who missed it, it's just going down the line of those who have flagged that they've had a question in, a, in the order of appearance. And you can get on the stack in three ways, the raise your hand function, and I'll call on you, write stack in the chat and I'll call on you, or write your question and I'll ask it for you. 
please speak slowly so that the closed captioning can capture all that you have to say. And again, I want to remind us that we may not get to every question, but we'll provide the panelists emails at the end of the Q&A so you can reach out with them personally with any unanswered questions. All right, let's get started. Does anyone have a question? Well, while we wait for those questions to start coming in, I have a question for you, for you panelists. How do you manage the inevitable struggle of the work-life balance that the grad student has to figure out how to navigate? So how I manage it, I would like to say is start your day early, don't wait, get up from the bed till 9 a.m. until you have to go to the classes. Because that's how I manage it and also, that kind of helps you to close your, out your day early. Um, I get done with most of my classes by like three or four p.m. and I would just go there. Like there, there would be seven, six to seven libraries on campus, and I wouldn't head home unless I'm done with my work or my submissions or my um, submissions for the upcoming deadlines or something. I wouldn't go home. So. I would have all my work done for the day by like 6, 7 p.m. or most of it like 8 p.m. if it's like too hard or if the deadlines are too many. And I would then head, head home, um, do with all of my dinner and close my day off early. Um, also, keep your calendars up to date as the panelists, one of the panelists said. It's very, very important for you guys to have your calendars up to date with all of the upcoming deadlines. Um, also, when you go to your Canvas on the Michigan website, you would have the option to sync your Google calendars with the Canvas calendars. So make sure you have done that so you have all of their deadlines coming up on your Google calendars, which can help you um, plan your week uh, as per the deadlines. Um, this is very important for all of the grad students because um, the deadlines is taken is something that is taken very seriously. Also, if if you think that you are not going to make up to that, please feel free to reach out to the graduate student instructors or the professors, and they would be happy to accommodate your um, your yeah your like whenever you would like to do it and give you extensions based on that. So like. It's very important for you to have your calendar saying that's how I manage my work schedule um, and the school. Does anyone else have anything to add about the work life balance? Um, I would just say, like, just stick to a routine have everything timed up and assign time to each and every thing according to the credibility you have with it so that will help you a lot okay so someone asks do y'all have any tips on academic success and i think similarly uh our next um, audience member asks, are there any recommendations on tools for staying organized? Yeah, I am heavy on the planners and to-do lists. Um, something that I learned very quickly at the start of my semesters was I get stressed very easily. And so something that I like to do is I will sit down at the start of each week um, and on Canvas, it's really nice because there is just like a regular calendar and it'll show every single due date for every class. And so at the start of the week, I'd sit down and do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and write down each um, due date um, to ensure that I know, okay, if it's due on Wednesday, I have to get it done by either Monday or Tuesday. Um, and that kind of helped me plan my days and what I need to do. Um, this helped me a lot because it didn't allow me to bite off too much that I couldn't handle each day. Um, 
Something that somebody else said on the panel list was making sure your calendars are up to date. So even if you buy just like a regular planner or you have a whiteboard at home, keeping that up to date, ensuring that everything is um, on your calendars, on your planners, you know what you have to do every day um, helped me a lot. Um, something that else that helped me a lot for academic success was being um, very, not, I don't want to say like annoying, but for my professors, for classes that I was a little bit more stressed in, I made sure that they knew who I was, whether if that's like talking in class or if that's emailing them or talking with them personally after class, I really wanted to ensure that they knew who I was. Um, and that also helps too, because later down the line, if you need them to help you with recommendations um, or job opportunities, you can definitely use them. Um, a lot of professors will even offer that up to you if they feel comfortable doing so. So just staying organized. Um, and again, it's kind of subjective because everybody has different learning styles. Everybody handles stress differently. So really just seeing what works for you in the first two weeks of your classes um, and then sticking with that once you figure it out. I would definitely um, support that and say that communication, I think, is a really big tool to academic success that I don't think people talk about enough. Um, so y'all do, yes, please. Yeah, hard work is the key, I would say. Just don't think like you'll get anything for easy. Like you'll have to like really work hard for academic success. UMish is not an easy school. So like, just be prepared, just like tell your mind that you'll have to work hard for it unless you get it. So that's one of the things I would say. Thank you. Does, do any of y'all live in Ipsy? Um, and do you have any tips for this or do you have any parking tips? Do y'all have a car? <laughs> I don't live in Ipsy, I live in Ann Arbor, but I have a lot of friends that I'm really close to in my program that live in Belleville or they live in Ipsy. So it is like Belleville, I think is like a 30 minute drive. Ipsy is a little bit closer. I think it's like 20 minutes. Um, so I hear them talk about it a lot. I would make sure that during like maybe the first week of your courses, making sure that you get there early, like maybe an hour, hour and a half early, just so you can get comfortable with figuring out, okay, how is the traffic during this time? Um, how long is my walk from wherever you decide to park? Um, that would be really helpful. And then for like parking, there's a lot of parking structures around campus, depending on where you're at. It just depends on your field of study and where your building's at. Um, it can get a little bit pricey because it is per hour, but I do know that Michigan offers, um, like parking passes, um, but they're kind of weird because they're color coded and so they don't work for every parking garage. So I would definitely look into that. Um, may work for some, may work for others. And there's also commuter lots. So there's, I know that there's one right by the stadium. I think there's one somewhere on State Street or somewhere. There's two commuter lots where you can park your car at and then take the bus um, that's affiliated with the university. And I believe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you just swipe your M card and it's no charge for the bus ride. Um, so definitely look into that too, because it could save you money. Yeah, the ride buses are free, of course, on your M card, and you can use it unlimited number of times. So um, it it gets really tough to get parking spot in central campus area specifically during the school year. Also, it's quite quite pricey. So I would say just do some of your research on parking rules and regulations before like thinking of anything. Thanks y'all. Another student asks, uh, they are a non-traditional student. They have a family and will also be working while in school. And they're afraid that they'll have trouble fitting in because they have so much vying for their time and energy. 
Do you have any suggestions on how to balance making the most of what is offered for their home slash work life? Um, I can kind of help. I'm not, I don't have a family, but a lot of the great thing about my Michigan too is that like my cohort I have people who are my age but I also have people who are a lot older some who have families um so it's really nice because you get to meet a whole bunch of different people so I wouldn't be afraid of not fitting in because you'll definitely find your type of crowd somewhere um that's a great thing about going to such a large university um is there are a lot of non-traditional students um, so you just have to be willing to kind of talk, I guess, about it and maybe find your crowd. But I know like um, my first like two semesters, I met a lot of people who do have families and something that they were talking about a lot is just setting boundaries for themselves where it's um, like we said kind of earlier, don't bite off too much that you can't chew kind of thing. It's okay to set those boundaries. It's okay to do two things on your to-do list and not do the rest, especially if you are talking to your professors. You know, if something comes up at home with a child and you're not able to meet this deadline that's in two days or that's tomorrow, ensuring that you are making the time to reach out to your professors and explain the situation um, nine and a half times out of 10, they're going to be on your side and allow you to have a deadline. You just have to be willing to ask. Um, but I wouldn't be afraid of not fitting in um, because everybody here is like really accepting. Um, sorry, I can't help like that much, but I hope like it helps a little bit, just setting boundaries and being willing to have communications with people. As a caregiver, I can also um, just support the boundaries and communication are, will be your best friend and your best tool for um, making it through successfully. Communication upfront all the time, um, immediately, and definitely like holding boundaries and maybe having somebody accountable, somebody in your family or, or another, um, uh, another colleague or cohort member that can help you help hold you accountable to those boundaries because it is easy to want to say yes to everything <laughs> okay y'all so someone asked how much time would you estimate you spend working outside of class per credit hour or just in general so i would i would go ahead and try and answer this one once you select your once you are like in the process of selecting your classes for for the semester be sure to go on Atlas. Like that's that's where, and that's a very helpful resource. I would say here um, that helps you build your planner, your calendar. It has got every cool features that that's required to build your planner or your calendar. Um, I'll put a link, or maybe someone else can for the Atlas Umish. But um, I would I would encourage you guys to make use of it. And when you type your class name or your class code on Atlas, it would show you the percentage of uh, the workload that that particular course or that particular class is expected to have. So maybe if you take a programming class, for example, I would say that the expected workload would be um, say 20%. So from my experience, what I, what I know is Anything that's above 20 to 20, 20 percent, you should expect a really good amount of workload on yourselves. Um, anything less than 20 is is man is is kind of cool. I mean, it's easy to manage, but anything that's above 20 percent, please make sure um, that you have sufficient um, hours outside of your classes um, to work on those kind of classes, because um, otherwise. If you choose something that's going to be pretty heavy on your schedule, then it would be difficult for you to manage all of your classes all together. So just kind of like um, take a step back, take a look at all of your classes, if they're well, well balanced in terms of workload. And Atlas is really a helpful website um, that can help you build your schedule and your classes for the semester. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, to add on to that, I think a professor has told me before where it's like one hour for every like credit you're taking. So if it's like a four hour or four credit class, they're expecting you to do at least like four hours of work, like each week or something outside of classes is what I've been told. Um, but something that helps me too is doing that like balance of oh my god I have so many classes I have so much work to do and trying to find time to do it something that I really like to do is just go out and do work at coffee shops or the library that way you're focused you don't have a tv in the other room that you may be tempted to go watch for like 20 minutes um so yeah, Atlas is also a really, <clears throat> excuse me, a really great tool <clears throat> when you're planning your courses. Um, so yeah, I think it's like one hour per one credit. But again, everybody um, teaches kind of different for professors. So it really also just depends on your professor and how much work they are giving out because it's different for everybody. Um, what I would say is like workload and per hour requirement is very specific to courses, I would say. Some courses require more than more efforts than you what it states in Atlas. Some requires even less what it states in Atlas. So like do check out Atlas, but like don't get fixed to it. I would highly suggest like just talk with your professor and like ask them what is your expectation from a student to give how much hours into this course, because they would be the one who would be very accurate enough. And they will actually, that will actually help you out because it depends on, it completely depends on the professor, like how they teach the course and what are the expectations from the students. So that's one of the thing that can actually give you a correct answer. Thanks, y'all. Um, what would you say is the was the biggest surprise about being a master student? I think the biggest thing I was surprised about is how fast paced it moves. Um, I went straight from my undergrad to my master's program, <clears throat> and it's crazy how fast it moves. So again, like you learn a lot about yourself. Well, I did and a lot of the people in the social work program that I talked to um, have agreed with me where it's like, you learn a lot about yourself in graduate school, how you handle stress, how you cope with it, um, how you, how you, I don't know, like for me, for social work, my field placement, um, you're actually doing hands-on work. Like I have my own client load and learning about yourself in that aspect, things that you like, things that you don't like in your job. Um, it's really, really interesting how fast paced everything goes, um, how much you learn about yourself. And it can be very, very scary, but it's really eye-opening and it shows you that you've had all of these hardships, but look at how much you overcame all of them. Um, so it can be really eye-opening, which is really nice and something that I didn't expect to happen at school. I, also, um, I was right out of my undergrad and into the grad school too. The biggest surprise for me was to see when you're in undergrad, most of the learnings and most of the teachings happens in class. When you get to a grad school, it's just it's just the high key takeaways in the class that are discussed or um, not the classes don't go much into deep and it is expected that you yourself would take a look and do a deep dive into each of those topics. So make sure that you realize that thing on the first day. I wish someone told me this during my first days, but expect your professors to just like be on the key take key takeaways and not go into deep dive because the the schedule the course schedule and the the course uh, workout is so big and so vast that it's really not possible for the professors to deep dive into each of those topics um, so be ready 
as a surprise. Take that as a surprise, but be ready to go have your self-study hours on yourself, um, on your end, apart from the classes. So what I would say, like, the biggest surprise for me is, like, I was not even knowing like how much capable I am, but I ended up being it. So graduate study is gonna like flourish you so much and you won't believe that what a person you are, but you will become one. So that's the beauty of master studies, I would say. Definitely, definitely. So y'all, um, can someone enroll in a lot of grad courses, say like four or five, and then attend them on the first week to pick the ones that they find um, that they're the most interested in and then drop two to three courses afterwards? Um, but what's the last date for a free drop, of course? I will find that and I'll put it in the chat for you. But can yeah, they... Can... So like different yeah. schools, I believe they have different add and drop deadlines. Uh, it depends on which school they're enrolled in. Um, I believe it's, it's it's uniform for undergrads, but I guess for grad school, it's kind of different across schools. I don't know if I'm sure. I, I'm not sure, though. But yeah, um, many people do that. Like they take courses with their which they aren't sure of if they would be taking or not. And once they are interested, they see that, OK, their interest lies in it and they, the, they are comfortable with the workload and kind of stuff. They would take it and they would drop other courses. So feel free to do that you can you are but then make sure you drop the other ones before they add and drop because once they get logged you would not be able to make or make any changes to your course um also kind of to talk about maybe not like specifically exactly this question because i feel like it was just answered but to go along with adding courses and dropping courses um when you get your day to sign up for classes, make sure you are prepared and you have all of the classes that you want ready and ready to go in your little backpack online because for the School of Social Work anyways, like it is really difficult to get classes after they're filled, um, but it is possible to fill out a petition online if you really, really need this specific course at this specific time on this day, you just list your reasons why. It could be, um, I have a child and I have to pick them up at daycare after this time. You know, if you make your own little case, you will more than likely be accepted into that course, even though it's full. But um, make sure you are prepared on your day when you have to get classes because it can be very difficult. Um, because classes fill up really quickly. So make sure you're not waiting two days after to try and apply to courses. Yeah, also I would like to highlight here that we as incoming or rising second year master's students, we have already been enrolled. So already you guys would be lacking on those seats for the incoming second year master's students. Because sometimes the first years and the second years get in the same classes. So make sure you do that right away when you have your dates ready for enrolling into the courses. Also, what you can do is like, you can always talk to the seniors of your department or major. So like they can guide you like which courses are, are really busy courses and are hard to get in so that you can always focus on getting those first because there's always a set number of credits that and you can en only enroll in those number of credits. You cannot go beyond that. So you'll have to prioritize your courses, like which ones to resist register first. Uh, sometimes it happens is when classes start, people leave courses and then you can get into those classes, but it's very picky and depends on courses and departments and major. Some departments usually like get quite empty due when the classes start, but some doesn't. So it's actually depending on the course which you are enrolling in. Thanks, y'all. We have time for one last question. Do you have any tips for searching for summer internships? Handshake is one of the very good portals that the university offers. 
also there is uh, one portal called as careers by 1220 so these are the portals that are very helpful and have active listings in it uh, but what the thing is like these also these portals also take you to the careers website of companies so it's just a like redirected link it's nothing like you mesh has a very different application for each and every job it has for some of the job postings but not for everyone for most for most of the job postings it will just redirect you to the company's career website so yeah but handshake and careers uh, by 1220 is a very good resource that you can use i don't know like if the 1220 is very specific to engineering students but yeah i am only aware I'm like aware of these two majorly. Also, like I would highly recommend you guys to have a list of firms or companies which you want to target to. Because generally speaking, all of these websites like LinkedIn or Handshake or any of the careers website, they are not updated as often. So uh, maybe they would show some links that, that have already been expired. Some job postings are already expired. So I would highly recommend have a list of on an average of 20, 30 firms or companies which where you want to apply to for a summers or maybe full time and check on their company website only. Uh, because what I've had experiences with is the recruiters or the hiring managers, when they go with the applications, they would have their applications um, collected first from their careers website, other than LinkedIn or maybe Handshake or something. So make sure whenever you apply to an opportunity or for an opportunity for summer or maybe full time, you apply on the company website um, and not, not on like LinkedIn or Indeed or any of the other options. That's my recommendation and that's my personal. Okay, thank you. Um... Before we part ways today, I'd love to ask our panelists the biggest piece of advice they'd like to leave our audience members as they start their new journey here in Michigan. So from my end, biggest piece of advice I would like to give you guys is there's something called as office hours for all of the classes, for all of the courses, uh, which are held by the professors as well as the graduate student instructors. So I would highly, highly recommend you guys because many of the people, like I was not from programming background and um, I came into a programming course, a data science course. So I would highly recommend make use and utilize your office hours of GSIs and of, of your professors, because that is what is actually gonna help you to get through the course, through the course assignments, deadlines, because actually the instructions that are given in the class or maybe on the assignments are, mostly not clear when you start school in the beginning. Um, so make use of office hours as much as you can um, throughout your journey as a student. Um, the biggest piece of advice that I would wanna leave with everybody is to try and remain present throughout this entire experience. Um, make time to have fun and make the most out of every situation. Cause again, it goes by within a blink of an eye um, but just ensuring that you're making space and making time for mental health, um, physical health, it's vital, um, because burning yourself out to the point where you lose yourself is really easy to do in a high stress, um, environment. Um, but it's really difficult to recover from. So just remember that you deserve this opportunity. You deserve to be here and take up as much space as you can. Um, the biggest piece of advice that I would give is advocate for yourself and your needs because you are the only one for yourself and like try to communicate as a graduate student and try to express the feelings that you have. You are the only one who's going to be for you. So advocating yourself is the best thing also like seek out for a supportive community join join affinity groups clubs events that that are really close to your interests so that 
you have always something around you so yeah and explore i would say because the more you will explore the more you will learn and the more you will get to know and you don't know like when you will find a very good opportunity just by exploring because most of the people don't explore itself so yeah okay thank you and go blue <laughs> go blue